watch the changes of the copper chloride hydrate while it is heated. It's really tempting to want to poke at the hydrate, so you'll see I'll be using a glass stirring rod. That, of course, provides an opportunity, sadly, for material sticking to the stirring rod, which could introduce certainly sources of error. You'll see me spending some time trying to make sure that every last bit of the hydrate is removed. In the next segment, watch carefully, actually listen carefully, while you'll be able to hear the material popping at, like popcorn. Again, I will work very hard to eliminate the green hydrate from the stirring rod so that um, air is not introduced into the measurements. Actually leaving the stirring rod in the dish so that it will warm up will remove the water from the green hydrate that's still on the stirring rod, causing it to dry out into the anhydrate and then falling off the stirring rod and ending up in the dish where we want it to be. In the next part, watch carefully how to use the tongs as opposed to how not to use the tongs. First, I'll start using them incorrectly, which could lead to dropping the dish, and then I'll show you how it would be best to turn the tongs over and actually grip the side. I'll place the dish onto a wooden board for cooling off. Again, be sure and record your measurements into your Google Lab Sheet. Next, the anhydrate will be placed into the beaker and rehydrated by adding water. Watch carefully to the color changes during the dissolving process. Water will be used to clean the dish to be sure that all of the chemical makes it into the beaker. You can already see a color change happening. Refer to your lab sheet and be sure and make some observations. The color will change further upon more water being added. Again, referring to your lab sheet, be sure and check another post lab question that will ask you something about the hydrolysis of the copper ions in solution. Next, a piece of aluminum wire which has not been weighed because we will use an excess quantity of aluminum wire as you will see when we are finished there will be aluminum wire remaining. You can see the reaction start very quickly with the presence of bubbles and watch carefully as you'll see color changes, formation of materials, make some observations as you go. carefully as some of the bubbles get trapped inside the copper that's sticking to the wire and almost levitate the wire with the copper attached to it up off the bottom of the beaker. What's happening to the color of the solution and what is that giving us evidence of?
And finally, the excess aluminum wire will be removed, shaking off the copper metal that has formed and rinsing off the wire as well to try to get as much of the copper off the wire and into the solution. Eventually this solution will be discarded and only the copper will be saved, dried, and eventually weighed. Be sure and record the mass of the filter paper. Notice how the filter paper is folded into quarters and then three edges are pushed off to one side while the fourth edge can then be opened up to create a funnel shaped. Put into a homemade funnel to support the paper and moistened so that the paper will stay inside the funnel. Now the solution will be added first and eventually all of the solid copper will be washed into the filter paper separating the copper from the solution. Again, making sure that all of the copper makes it into the filter paper, which has been weighed, and the copper will then be rinsed to wash all of the copper from the beaker into the filter paper and rinsed in the funnel to be sure that the solution has been washed off. Now the filter paper with the copper will be set aside and dried. One more measurement to make and then a quick look at the rim of the evaporating dish and then you'll be all set to process this lab data. So hopefully you can look carefully and see that the edge of the evaporating dish is not shiny the way the rest of the dish is. And just like a plant pot, notice how water behaves on the shiny side as opposed to the unglazed portion. There is a post lab question that will refer to this particular attribute.